Hey guys, today we have a 2024 C8 E-Ray in the dyno. We just got it in here and we got to do some testing and I'm really excited to show you guys what this thing does with the electric motor combined with the gas motor. This thing's pretty cool. One of our good customers, Steven, entrusted Corey to fly down to Kansas City and pick up this E-Ray for him, drive it back up, get the break-in and miles on it necessary so we could go ahead and strap on the dyno and make some full throttle runs. I wanna give you guys a quick overview of how this E-Ray functions and then we'll do some comparison of dyno graphs against a stock Stingray as well as a stock Z06 since we have that as well. So the E-Ray is just like a regular Stingray, except that it has a large battery in the center of the car and electric power to the front wheels, effectively making it behave like all wheel drive and giving it a ton of extra power that it can use provided to the front wheels. So it's got some differences here. Um, one thing that we can see on the dash here is you can see some gauges that will tell you how much horsepower the gas motor's putting out and how much horsepower the electric motors are putting out. You can also tell when it's regenerating and charging the battery back up. There's the ability on the dash as well to see the battery charge level as well as the battery temperature. So those, those two things are new. And then there's a couple new buttons down here on the side. One of them is a disable feature for the auto stop and stop. So if you don't want it to shut off the gas engine while you're stopped, you can press that button. The other one is a charge button for the battery. When you push that going down the road, what will happen is it will use the gas powered engine to charge the battery up even faster. And what you'll notice is it essentially puts a load on the engine by using the regenerative braking of the electric motors in the front. And you'll see the charge will come up very fast. So if you're trying to use some horsepower and your battery is low, you can use that to charge it up quicker and then be ready to go again, which is kind of a neat feature. Other cool things you can do, you can start the car in stealth mode and drive it around on the electric motor only for a, a decent amount of range, up to a certain mile an hour and up to a certain amount of acceleration that you ask for with the pedal. At that point, it will automatically turn on the gas motor, synchronize everything and take off from there. There's also a shuttle mode you can start up into, which will allow you to drive around up to 15 miles an hour just on the electric. You'd only want to use that in a parking lot, just kind of moving it around or maybe indoors, never on the street because the gas motor won't start and you might get stuck, unable to go fast enough to keep up with traffic. So that's kind of uh, how the E-Ray works. It's all pretty automatic. You can't really turn the electric motor off. It'll just kind of charge itself and use it when you put your foot down. So when we run this car on the dyno and we go full throttle, it gives it full electric output as long as it has the battery for it all the way through the runs and we'll see that in the graphs. So before we jump into the numbers, you might be wondering how can we even dyno this car correctly and get a measurement of horsepower that's accurate? And that's a good question and I wanna cover that. So we have a linked dyno jet. What that means is the front drum and the rear drum can be linked together with a giant belt to make sure they turn at very similar speeds. That's important with the E-Ray because if you just try to spin the rears, it's gonna go into dyno mode and not give you any front power. And if you have an unlinked dyno and you try to take off, it's gonna do different things with the wheels. It's gonna detect that. And again, it's probably gonna either go into dyno mode or it's gonna shut off the electric all wheel drive essentially and you won't get the power. So what we did here was we linked our dyno together and we drive the car as if it's on the road and it does allow us to make full throttle pulls and it gives us the full torque from the engine in the back and it gives us the full torque from the electric motors in the front. And it reads that together as one collective number in the results. So what does it put down? 630 foot pounds of torque and 573 horsepower. Now I've got that compared to two different stock graphs here. One of them being a stock C8 Stingray with a typical number of 437 horsepower and 418 torque. And the other graph here in green is a stock C8 Z06, just for an interesting comparison here. But let's focus on the C8 Stingray because that's more of an apples to apples. So if we look at the red versus the blue, I've separated the horsepower and the torque to make it easier to look at them. So if we take a look down here at the torque, there's over 200 foot pounds added from the electric motors, starting from about 2000 RPM and carrying all the way until about 4,200 RPMs. Then it starts to lessen the torque from the electric motors. There is a little bit of a dip there where it rolls the electric motor off and it still finishes with a significant amount of extra horsepower and torque up there at the top. So I'll show you guys some different points here on the graph. For example, here at 4,300 RPMs, 
347 horsepower out of a stock Stingray versus 520 out of this car. And all the way out at Redline, even as the electric motor drops off a little bit, we're still seeing at 6,200 RPM, 431 on a base Stingray and 530 out of this E-Ray. So still an extra 100 horsepower at Redline, even at the end when the batteries and the discharge is kind of at its limitation there. As I mentioned, I've also got a Z06 graph pulled up on here just for fun. The interesting thing with the Z06 power band is that it's about the same as a Stingray through most of the power band. After 6,000 RPM, the Z06 engine can keep on revving all the way out past 8,000 RPM, and that's where it really shines and makes the extra horsepower, is up on the top end there. But before that point, anywhere in the low end, it's pretty comparable to a Stingray, so the E-Ray actually makes more torque and power through most of the power band than either one of those two cars. So we know there's mixed opinions out there on electric vehicles. We completely understand that, being a performance shop that we are. But we do think it's pretty cool to see the technology of electric used in a way with a gas motor to give this car the performance that it does. And the power and the torque speaks for itself. As for this particular E-Ray, the owner has some very ambitious plans. This car is headed down to Lingenfelter here shortly to get their Magnuson supercharger kit installed on it. Then it will come back to us for some more dyno testing. And we'll see what this car can do with a supercharger and an electric motor combined together. That should be pretty exciting. So love it or hate it, let us know what you guys think about the E-Ray in the comments. And as always, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.